welcome to the Wednesday night service at Master Baptist Church. We're glad to have all you folks here. Good crowd tonight. Those that are watching by video, we're glad to have you. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get started in our study. Let's pray. Our Father, we love you tonight. We're grateful and thankful to be gathered together tonight. We thank you for the cooler weather that has finally come our way. We just pray that you will meet with us tonight, that your Holy Spirit would work and teach us uh, what we need to know. We pray for the names on our list that we've called out tonight. We just pray that you'll have your will and way in each of those situations. We pray for our country and for the elections coming up. And Father, I pray for uh, those in the survey of the 41 million Christians that say that they're not going to vote, that they would, uh, you would get a hold of their hearts that they need to do that, that we need to be active in voting and active in our country so that perhaps maybe through our votes things can go in the right direction. And we just pray now that you'll meet with us and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, we are back tonight in Exodus chapter 29 and 30. We've been talking about the tabernacle. and um, The first week that we discussed it, we are talking about the details, how that God is in the details, and he gave measurements, and he said covered in gold or covered in brass, and, and so many eyelets and so many sockets, and, and how to put the, everything together. And God gave Moses specific instructions, and then Moses gave those instructions to the people. God gave people the Holy Spirit so that they would know how to do those things. Uh, and then last week we looked at the fact that the priests were the ones that were to do the duty in the uh, sacrifices and the uh, garments that they had to wear and the things that were... Uh, and again, God was in specifics, the, the mitre... And, and the robe and the bells at the bottom and, and everything was in detail because God is into details. Yeah. Tonight we're going to look at the dedicated dwelling. Uh, and and it's, it's so neat that we can look at the tabernacle in the Old Testament and compare it to the temple in the New Testament. Who's the temple in the New Testament? We are. We are. And so the tabernacle has been built exactly to God's specifications, as we've already said. Uh, his instructions have been followed precisely, yeah. uh, and, and we need to follow His instructions precisely. We have the instruction manual, yeah, yeah, and we're to follow that. But the tabernacle, much like the church, it's a building. Yeah. Uh, it was a place to gather. It was a beautiful structure, but it was a holy place. It wasn't just a building. It was a holy place where God met His people. Today, you and I are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And God wants to meet with us. And we are to come before Him. We are His temple. And to meet with Him. And so, uh, once the building had been erected, God gave instructions and details, again, because He's into details, in preparation of the priests and in preparation of the people. So that's what we're going to kind of look at tonight. Uh, the tabernacle uh, could meet the exact specifications that God gave, and that's all important. But the priests, if they were not prepared properly and in the right state, they couldn't be what God needed them to be. Yeah. And you and I, if we are not, if our temple is not what it ought to be, God can't use us either. And so there was this time of consecration. The priests had to prepare, and the people had to be consecrated. Uh, or set apart, and that's what you and I are today. Now, today's church building itself, I mean, it doesn't make the church. If this building burnt down, we're still the ambassador about the church. We're yeah. still the church because the church is the people. It's you and I. And so the church is ecclesia for Greek, which is a, a, a group of assembly of baptized believers. That's what we are uh, when we come together. Uh, it's not the place where we assemble. This building is not the church. And God makes it clear that we are. And like I said, if this church burned down, or if it was under construction and we had to meet somewhere else, we're still what? We're still the church. We're still Ambassador Baptist Church no matter where we're at. And so uh, that's the, the church will still exist no matter what happens until we all get to heaven or, or we're dead. In the same way, the material aspect of the tabernacle uh, was secondary. It wasn't the main focus. Uh, it was the consecration of the priest and the people that was to be the focus. And it's the same way with you and I today. Mark chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, if you want to turn there, kind of helps us out a little bit with that. Jesus is talking to the disciples, 
they come out of the temple and talking about the building. And, and Jesus kind of makes it very clear that the building is not the thing to focus on. Mark 13, 1 and 2, And as he went out of the temple, one of the disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. I mean, look at all these beautiful buildings and these stones. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. It's not the building. And that's the same way with us today. And so we're going to look at two things tonight. Number one, or point A, the priests were consecrated. Uh, the priests were to be sanctified. As we said before, sanctified means to be set apart. God had set them apart for a specific duty to do in the tabernacle. You and I have been set apart. Uh, we have specific things that God wants us to do. And so... Uh, as we look at these scriptures, the passages go into great detail of the priest's preparation for service. Uh, and we're not going to read all the chapters because from chapter uh, 25 to chapter 30, 31, it gives all the details of all the garments they wore, all the things that they had to go through, how they made the sacrifices. But I want us to notice a couple things. If you look at chapter 28, verse number 2, they had special garments. Chapter 28, verse number 2. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty. Holy garments. And so they were to be made for what? Look what it says. For glory and for beauty. God does everything first class. Uh, and so it was, to, it was to bring glory to him. What are you and I to do in word or deed or whatsoever we do? We're to bring glory to God. And so the garments were, for the priest, was to bring glory and beauty to God. It was to be a focus on Him. Not only that, but they were to be anointed with a special oil. Look at chapter 29 and verse number 7. Chapter 29 of Exodus, verse number 7. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. And so they had a specific anointing oil that they poured on him uh, to to sanctify him or to consecrate him. And if you go over to chapter number 30, verses 22 through 23, it tells you about that oil. It tells you about what was used to make that oil, all the different spices and stuff. Verse 22 says, Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices. And it gives the list of all the spices and things that are there. Verse 25, And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary, it shall be an holy anointing oil. And so God, again, gave them specific ingredients, being specific again about the things that were to be put together to anoint Aaron and to anoint the priest and to anoint all the, uh, the stuff in the tabernacle when they dedicated it. But look down further, verse number uh, 20 or 31, and thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Mm -hmm. Notice that. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall ye make any other like it after the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his people. That's how holy this was to be and how set apart it was to be uh, for the priest. And again, God used the Holy Spirit to give people the knowledge to mix these just correctly so that they would have that anointing oil. And so the priests were to, to be anointed with that, and what it was, it was to be of a sweet savor toward the Lord. Chapter 29, verse 42. Do I need to turn that back up? Everybody cold? Mm -hmm. Verse 42, chapter 29. I'm one page off. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak there unto thee. And so uh, the priests were to be there to meet the people, to fulfill the, the priestly duties of the tabernacle. They were to be anointed. They were called out. And there was to be a continual burnt offering. 
Now, back in the day, they burned offerings. They had drink offerings. They had burn offerings. They had sin offerings. They had so many offerings, you could get confused. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but thankfully, you and I today, we don't have to worry about that. Because God sent his son one time, one offering, uh, all sufficient offering for you and I. He took care of all of it. Amen. And so that offering, uh, and we won't read it, but if you read, if you write down Hebrews 10, 1 through 18 and read it, Christ went to Calvary and became that offering for you and I. And now, Hebrews 7, 25, he is there ever making intercession for you and I. And so where they would have to bring the, the sacrifices and present them to the priest, and the priest would offer them for their sins, Jesus Christ did that for you and I once and for all. Amen. We don't have to do that anymore. Uh, and thank goodness, amen. amen. But the priests were given specific instructions, and the people themselves, after the priests were consecrated, they need to bring the sacrifice, and they need to be consecrated. Look at uh, Exodus chapter 30, verse 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord, when thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numberest them, this they shall give, every one that passeth among them, that are numbered, half a shekel, after the shekel of the sanctuary, a shekel is twenty giros, and half a shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. Every one that passeth among them, that are numbered, from twenty years old and above, shall give an offering unto the Lord. That'd be a good preaching for today. Everyone should give an offering unto the Lord. Verse 15. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel, when they give an offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel, and shalt appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. And so... Uh, they had to give an offering. It was a half a shekel. And here's the thing. The rich gave a half a shekel. The poor gave a half a shekel. Everybody gave the same. The poor didn't have to give less or more, and the rich didn't have to give less or more. And so, uh, you and I today, God requires, it's the standard, 10%. So if you're rich, 10%. If you're poor, 10%. Everybody gives the same amount. The monetary Giving is different depending on rich or poor, but everybody gives the same thing. And so God was no respecter of person there, and he's no respecter of person today. And, and so if and that's what they gave. And, and so the priests, uh, they were purchased, they set apart for service. The people then were sanctified and set apart for service. You and I today are set apart for service. And so uh, when you look at it today, we are brought with a price. You think about that. We're not our own. Now some of us like to be our own, but we've been purchased. We're bought with a price. And so if we call upon God, God is no respecter of person. We all get saved the same way. Yeah. Rich people don't get saved differently than poor people. Yeah. We are all the same. And so 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God, where? In your body and your spirit, which are God's. So we belong to Him. He purchased us. We are His. Now back in that day, they had to bring a sacrifice in and present it to the priest. How do we do that today? Glad you asked. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a what? Living, Living sacrifice. sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So back in that day, they came to the priests and presented a sacrifice, a calf, a goat, whatever it was for those days, for their families and how God set it up. They brought that to the priest. Today we don't have to do that. Today we present ourselves a living sacrifice. 
And so Jesus Christ took care of everything at Calvary. And so now you and I, we come to him as living sacrifice. We are believer priests, purchased, set apart for service to God. And so we are to present ourselves that way. Uh, for instance, um, um, tonight, I didn't have one this morning. I got a military guy tonight. But Brother Tim, when he was in the military, whatever else he was doing before he went in, he set that aside. And his focus was what? On the military and what whoever was in charge, his superior, told him to do. Yeah. When he got out of the military and set that aside, now he goes back to what he's doing. And so uh, you and I, we belong to Christ. Mm. We have been set apart. We've been uh, consecrated. Yeah. We have been set aside from whatever it may be that we want to do. And we are to do what the commander-in-chief tells us to do. Amen. And, and God has the right to tell us to do that. And so the priests were sanctified. They were consecrated. They were set aside for that purpose in that day, and we're kind of that way today. So the second point is the people were consecrated. Uh, the tabernacle was complete. Instructions were given to the priest. They were uh, anointed, Aaron and his, and his brothers and sons. They were anointed. They were, they were set aside. Now it's time for you and I to be consecrated. And that's what I was reading here in verse 11 through 16. Uh, they were to give a half a shekel. Uh, it, was, it was what God commanded them to do. It was an atonement for uh, the priest. Atonement, a half a shekel. Rich or poor didn't matter. And that's the great thing about God. God is no respecter of person. And so I'm no more important to God today than any of you. I'm the pastor. What do you do? i got to get saved the way you got to get saved. In God's eyes, we're all his children. We're all the same. And so we all belong to him. And so none of us are greater than the other. Uh, it's a tremendous picture of salvation when you think about it. Because whether you're rich or whether you're poor, the only way you get saved is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. Amen. And so it doesn't matter, rich or poor, young or old. It's all the same. It's all what Christ did for Calvary. No more, no less. It doesn't take more blood to get a rich person saved as, as a poor person or a young person or an old person. Yeah. It's all through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's all for what he did. 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by the traditions from your father, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. And see, when they brought their sacrifices, they had to be the same, without blemish, without spot. They had to be perfect. And that's what Jesus was. And so uh, God chose to use his son as the sacrifice. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that blood, lose all their guilty stains. Mm. It amazes me that the blood of Jesus Christ is so powerful that when we get saved and we're under the blood, God can't see our sin anymore. All He sees is the blood of His Son. Yeah. That's where the song came from. What sin are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. And so when we're forgiven, it's as far as the east is from the west, the deepest parts of the sea. And so when we stand before God, we're going to be wrapped in Christ's righteousness as if we were Christ Himself. And, man, that's amazing. And so... Back then, God chose the Sabbath day uh, for the Jews. It was a special time for the children of Israel to draw closer to Him. They were not to do any work on that day. They were to focus on Him. Today, we do on the Sabbath day or the Lord's day. But you and I, today, we ought to set us a time every day to draw close to God. Every morning or whenever it's convenient, we ought to spend time with Him in His Word. We ought to spend time with Him in prayer uh, throughout the day. Uh, we ought to be praying without ceasing. Brother Tim, we used to drive over to the old warehouse uh, with his eyes closed, praying without ceasing, hoping he didn't hit nobody. But, but it's that's not what it means, but we ought to be in an attitude that if if preacher sends an email that someone needs prayer, we ought to be able to right there and there, bow our head and say, Lord, and, and pray. Yeah. And, and be that way. And, and, and we need to seek to yield to him, present our bodies a living sacrifice, be clean, be holy. As he is holy. That's what he said. Be ye holy as I am holy. That takes work. And sometimes we don't want to put that work in there. But that's what God requires of us. God wants us to be a clean vessel. He can't use a dirty vessel. 
if you remember the story in Jeremiah where the potter was working on the wheel and he was doing a work on the wheel and there was a piece of mar and it got into the clay and it messed up the work. Well, that mar is kind of a representation of sin. Mm. And it messed up his work. So what did he do? He threw the clay out the window? No, he removed the mar, the, the, the dry clay, and he made it over again, a vessel of honor. Yeah. And listen, we're going to sin. They may sin today. Am I the only one who does we're going to sin. We're still in this flesh. And, and so God has to kind of take it out and make us over again. We confess our sins. Yeah. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so uh, that's what we need to do so that God can use us. And uh, I had an example here tonight, and I, I didn't use it, but I'm going to use it anyway. But we as a church... Uh, as I was saying earlier, we're the church. And so, I found these, I thought I'd go ahead and do that. Jesus Christ is the foundation, amen? Okay. And so when Brother Tim comes in and gets saved, he gets added to the foundation. And it's Jennifer, she gets added to the foundation. This is the building that we're talking about. It's us, one-on-one, -on -one, being built together. And then here's Miss Marcia. And there's my wife. And there's Brother Matt. We just keep building. That's the church. It's all of us. We individually are a church, but it's all of us together, the church of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful those blocks were here. But you all already knew that, didn't you? But that, that's, that's who we are. Mm -hmm. and, and here we are. We represent the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he wants our temple to be clean. And so back then it was the priest. Today Jesus Christ is our high priest. And we are, we are priests, so to speak, individually. So you have to ask yourself today, how is your temple? Are there some things? You remember what Jesus did? He went into the temple and he got rid of the money changers and all those things that were defiling the temple. Yeah. We allow things into our temple through here, through here, yeah. that can defile the temple. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to be a clean temple. Listen, you carry God with you everywhere you go. Think about that. Everything you see, God is in you. Everywhere you go, everything you hear, everything you say, you take God with you everywhere you go. When we were growing up, there were some places that, that we want to go to eat or whatever, and, and we didn't want to take the kids there because they had a, a bar up there or whatever, and we just didn't think the kids needed to be around that. And that's the way our, our body is. It's the temple. And there's some things we ought not to look at and see and hear and let in. And when we do, then we need to come to the altar and present your bodies a living sacrifice and get rid of it. Just like they came and presented their sacrifices and God would accept the sacrifices and forgive and God will forgive us. And so God's made it clear through these chapters 29 through 31 there's an exact order of everything, an exact order of how to build all the stuff, an exact order for the priest's clothing, an exact order for the priests and how they were to do their duties. And guess what? God's given us his word. There's exact orders in here for you and I. Yeah. God commands us to do some things. God commands us to come out and be separate. God commands us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. God commands us to give our tithes and offerings. God commands us to love one another. God, I mean, there's so much. I mean, I could go on all night, but we don't want to be here all night. But God's given us the same thing today like he did the Jews. Now, the Jews rejected him when he came as Messiah. They've been set aside. And, I mean, it's so close. The rapture's got to be so close. I just, I just think every morning when I wake up, I think, man, another day. But when you look at everything, it, it's wonderful to live today knowing what we have in the Bible and that we are just, everything's lining right up like God said. And God could come back at any moment. And so we need to heed His orders. We need to live like He's commanded us to live. We need to do the things that He's meant. He's commanded us to study His Word, to show ourselves approved. He's commanded us to make it a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path to follow it. He's commanded us to hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against Him. These are all the things that God expects us to do. And He has the right to tell us because He purchased us. And we belong to Him. And so we have the directions for our lives. 
If you don't read this book, you don't know. If you don't come to church, you're not going to hear. Brother Graves did a great message Sunday night on, on not being ashamed of the Word of God. It's the power of God. And I told him this morning, he started something. Because I'm picking up where he left off Sunday night and finishing it Sunday morning. And so, but you and I are the temple of God. We represent Him. We're His children. And so we need to, sometimes we like to take shortcuts. Well, I know God said to do this, but uh, I'm better at this way. Mm. No, we're better at this way. Because yeah. I have been down the shortcut road, it's not fun. I've been to the woodshed, it's not fun. It is not fun. But God's got too much invested in us and loves us too much to let us get away with all that. And, and so we just need to understand that He owns us. I know that sounds a little slavish, but, but our kids, we didn't let them get away with anything, did we? Mm -hmm. Now, I got away with some things that I'm going to have to answer for. Dad didn't know about, but God knows. Mm -hmm. But we don't let them get, and God's not going to let us get away yeah. with it. And so, uh, but we, we've got to guard against shortcuts. The devil will want you to take a shortcut. He'll want you to, well, like he did with Eve and the God. Well, had God really said that? He just doesn't want you to be wise like mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the woman, as natural as they are, think, oh, I could be as wise as God. I think I'll just take a little bite here. I always get in trouble. <laughs> but here's the thing. If we will do it God's way, like He commands. He'll bless. Yeah. He'll bless us in our lives. He'll bless us in our giving. He'll bless. And it's all right here. All we got to do is get the manual book out. Brother Tim, and, and we've talked several times, if he didn't obey the manual in the military, there was there was consequences. Oh, yeah. And if we don't want to obey God, there's consequences. Yeah, sure. But God said that His His ways are not hard. Mm. And He'll provide a way. Amen? Right. And so... Uh, we've got to realize God's ways are not our ways. Yep. See, we see right now, God sees all the way to the end. And God knows what's best for us. We know what we think is best for us. I mean, I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a <coughs> professional quarterback or a pitcher for a big major league team. I did it in high school. And, and God said, no, you're going to Bible college. And I went to Bible college. And so I'm making millions as a preacher, working three hours a week instead of millions as a pitcher, you know, out there. Amen. But God is blessed. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't have it any other way because God's ways are the best ways. Yeah. Right. And he knows us better than anybody. I know you you ladies think your husband knows you, but God knows you better, amen, amen. and vice versa. And so we ought to just be obedient and serve because we belong to him. Yeah. Just like we expected our kids to be obedient and to, to, that belong to us. Now it's grandkids and great-grandkids, as you guys all know. Yep. So, let's pray. Our Father, we love you tonight. We're thankful for your word. We're thankful for how that we can look at the Jews, your holy people, and the tabernacle, and we can look at that and compare it to what we have today and how that they had to bring the sacrifice but God, you sent your son to make the ultimate sacrifice for us. And so we're thankful today that we can know that we're saved and forgiven, that our sins are under the blood, that we have a home in heaven, that you're preparing us a mansion. And Father, I can't help but think one day very soon you're going to call us home and we're going to be in our eternal state to live with you and to worship you and to enjoy heaven throughout eternity. And we just give you all the praise for that in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, thank you for being here tonight. We've got uh, 246, 8, 9 tonight, and had 6 this morning.